Um, so I've been tasked with talking about patient maintenance uh, and prosthesis design and keratinized gingiva and how this influences the health of our implants long term. Uh, but rather than standing up here and droning on about what profi paste to use, I thought it might be a good idea to look at this from the standpoint of what barriers and challenges we face in trying to achieve long-term health around our implants. And uh, it's a big topic and there's a lot to cover. Uh, so what I suggest everybody do is um, raise your seat backs to your upright position and fasten your seat belts because this is going to be a fast flight. <clears throat> so, what is it exactly that seems to cause some of our implants to lose bone, whilst other implants seem to maintain good bone levels over time? Obviously, Professor Cochran has talked about the implant abutment junction, and that is absolutely critical, and no doubt is a large component of what goes on around our implants. But again, it does seem to stabilize after uh, a certain number of months after the connection has taken place. So what I'm really going to be talking about are the biologic complications that we all deal with day in and day out around implants. And very briefly, for the purpose of today's presentation, I'm going to speak about mucositis and use the definition as inflammation of the peri-implant mucosa and peri-implantitis with a very basic definition of bone loss associated with that inflammation. So I was very pleased to see in the most recent ITI consensus that there has been more discussion about what factors may influence long-term biologic complications, and in particular, that there's some talk about the presence or absence of keratinized attached gingiva, and of course, the design and cleansability of the prosthesis. And most importantly, I was pleased to see this last comment, which is that alternative restorative solutions should be considered according to the patient's individual circumstances. Not every space in the head needs to be filled with an implant. And why this upper seven needed to be replaced with two implants in a 75-year-old man, uh, providing him with a new frication to keep clean, I will never understand. 